ahead on Early Birds. The Falcons are looking to continue their hot start. We will pick apart the pack. Plus, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Tyler Algier, including talking about his new backfield buddy, Bijan. And Michael Jenkins answers the big question, is the SEC overrated? That and more on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ, I'm Justin, and the Falcons shock are trying to go 2-0. It feels so good to say you're 1-0, but now the opportunity to go 2-0, so you got to get the 1 before you get the 2, so I love the fact that the Falcons got a win last week. Let's get to two now. First time it's happened in Early Birds history. Maybe oh, we're no. good luck. It, it turned around. All right, let's get <laughs> things started with the opening drive and shock Falcons and Packers tomorrow here on Fox 5. The offense in week one did enough to beat Carolina, and they seemed to get in a groove as the game went on, especially on the ground. So, DJ, what do you see? Yeah, I thought they were exp a very physical up front. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a good job of moving people. But more than that, I thought the two backs were decisive. I thought they had great patience, and then they were powerful. I can't wait to, to break down one of these particular runs, but they did a good job in space, and you see Bijan. It's unbelievable running in his first touchdown. It's pretty cool, but this is an offensive line and a group of receivers and tight ends that know their bread is absolutely buttered in the run game. Yeah, speaking of those receivers and tight ends, though, offense still has room to grow. Just ask Drake London, who was held without a catch the opening week. Tyler and Bijan were going crazy out there, and um, and they were doing their thing. So all I could do was go out there and try to help and, and, and get some blocks for them to spring them free or whatever it may, what I need to do to, to help them, and we won. I think a lot of guys can see where this team is headed and where we're going, and uh, everybody's just following suit and following that path. As we continue the opening drive shock, the Packers are going on three straight decades of great quarterback play. <laughs> and I guess we can add Jordan Love to that. He led Green Bay to 38 points against the Bears. What does Atlanta need to do to slow down that offense? I think it's similar to what you got to do with any quarterback. You got to get pressure on them. You got to find a way to make it uncomfortable, especially inside the pocket. And you can see in that last week versus the Bears, he didn't really get hit mm -hmm. a lot. He was just in the pocket, being able to survey the field, see what he wanted to do. But I think you have to change the looks up. You got to give him something different on every single play and the Falcons were good at that I thought last week against Bryce Young here's another opportunity to do that and the Packers have a lot of respect for the Falcons defense including NFC defense the player of the week our man Jesse Bates Jesse is a he's a really good safety for them um, you know uh, he's a ball hawk you've seen what he, the numbers he had last week with uh, two interceptions and a forced fumble so uh, um, you know he's a ball hawk he's a really good player um, and uh, you know, he's a very instinctual player and he plays on quarterback's eyes and that's how he made his plays uh, last week. So um, definitely a guy we got to be looking out for and uh, just know where he's at at all times. And as we wrap up the opening drive, Desmond Ritter. All right, I want to get I want to get your take, DJ. Great quarterback rating, no turnovers. He was under pressure. They didn't throw the ball a ton, though. Not a lot of yards, not much to Drake London, like you heard, or Kyle Pitts. So, Shock, what do you think? I think at the end of the day, he got a W, and mm -hmm. I think that's what matters. And you talk about his fifth start, and like you just mentioned, did not turn the football over. I think that's probably the most important thing is he gives you a chance to win the ball game. 15 of 18, but this guy continues to be the guy that just writes the ship. He does so much at the line of scrimmage that people don't know about that helps him get into good plays. Just because he doesn't have the numbers, last week's game was a culmination of the run game going. But you got to give a lot of credit to my man Desmond Ritter for just not turning it over. Yeah, the most important number one, yeah. one win in the books for Ritter and the Falcons. Well, welcome into Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. And Shock, one thing I'm excited to see tomorrow is the crowd. Oh, I mean, yeah. I sat next to you at the Benz last week. It was loud. It was fun. And you know that the cheeseheads are going to be coming out in force. You know they're going to be there, but we want more Falcons heads there more than anything. The fans were outstanding. You love Jeezy doing mm -hmm. the commercial breaks. You That's love the cool. swag and surf. I mean, there was so many things going on in game that you love, and then the fans are loud. Got to keep it going. All right, Shock. Well, we need you to roll out the film room. We'll have a film room of fun. You know, it's a Packers song, Roll Out the Barrel. It's like a polka. Never heard of it. That's our Sorry. first polka on early birds Sorry. and probably the last. <laughs> All right, we'll I see guess. you in a moment. But first, Tyler Algier was not handed anything in football. He was a walk-on at BYU, had a summer job for a while at Walmart to help pay tuition. No surprise that he was no stress when the Falcons added a first-round pick to his position group. Tyler and I sat down one-on-one -on -one this week, and I asked how his journey has shaped who he is today. Tyler Algier dodged back, and he turned the corner. 
This is really the chip on my shoulder I have always had. Because I was always overlooked, even in high school, only having the preferred walk-on and then a half scholarship to a D2. I keep it in the back of my head, but it's not like something I, oh my gosh, he said this, he said that. Like, you can't listen to outside noise. So kind of along the same lines, there were probably a lot of people that, you know, looked at the offseason and Falcons, they bring in a first-round pick at running back. There were probably a lot of people who assumed, okay, they're going to give the ball to Bijan a ton and everybody else will play a deep backup role. You never seemed concerned about that. Why? I think it's just um, <clears throat> just a belief in myself, just a belief in myself, and then obviously the coaches communicated that as well. So, but like having Bijan instead of like a oh he's like like you're not going to get any, but like use that as oh he's going to help me be, like become a better player. That's what has happened. Like we have such a great relationship. It's it's great. The way you talk about him, the way he talks about you, was that relationship instant or what helped it build over the last few months? Honestly, we clicked just like that. It, it was, yeah, it's kind of weird, like, just like, because, like, his person and his background and stuff, how Christ-like he is, it's it's awesome. Going to BYU, going to really a big religious school, so, like, having a guy like that and then, like, being able to relate. Did you see the celebration picture? I think it was one of the Falcons team photographers. One of the, one of the hardest pictures I've ever seen. <laughs> Insane. One of the, oh, my God, that's the pick of the year. Yeah, Bijan's first touchdown, we were just so excited for him, and then especially because we scored. It was just a special moment for everyone. I'll give credit to Blaine our photographer, he noticed that they saved your second touchdown ball. Do you save all the touchdowns or was that a special one for you? No, because I was inactive last year. So like being my first game and then scoring two, like it was because I was inactive the first season. It was just like, we're, we're here, we're playing week one. Not a big deal, but it's an accomplishment. You got this uh, great running back room where we're going to be calling both your names plus CP all year long. Is there a nickname? Thunder and Lightning kind of played out. Plus, you got mm. CP. Do you guys have something? That, that's a, that's a good question. That's a good one. What do you think? I was thinking about it. I don't have anything. Plus, you gotta get Cordero in there. Okay. That's the Flash right there. I like the Flash. Or the Joker. Batman, Robin, and the Joker. Batman, Robin, and does that doesn't go? Honestly, I'll, I'll think about that. Couple more big games. We'll come back together. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Good no, we, we'll find we'll find that out. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. All right, Justin, great sit down here with my man Tyler Algier. Let's talk about the other part of that duo that we're quickly going to find out is really special. We've seen that. I got a play here in this counterplay that was really special in the ballgame. It was a big game, but there are a lot of things that happens to help this play kind of explode. Now, the first guy I want you to watch is the center. Watch this move off the jump. As the play gets started, watch this little move. How look how off leg that is to be able to wiggle his feet around. Now he has to seal this defensive end. They're running a counterplay, so they want everything to look like it's going right, and then the counterplay is going to bring it back left. So as the play continues, you're going to see exactly what I'm saying. So now here's the other part of it. Keith Smith here, the fullback. This linebacker has to keep outside contained. Bijan could easily outrun him to the edge, but he sets up this run by setting up his back, and this guy gets outside, and you're going to watch him cut it back up. And as the play continues, watch the cutback and the speed. Now, this is the most important part. You talk about powerful Bijan. He's got one, two, three, four guys around him. He's going to be contacted right here at the 11-yard line. Watch where he finishes. As this play continues, contact the 11. He's down at the three-yard line. You're talking about a guy who's decisive, he's patient, and you're seeing it right there, powerful. A lot of guys putting in the work to spree him. This is going to be a fun duo to watch. And this guy, number seven, I expect so many more highlight plays coming from him, Justin. This duo, we got to get a name for him because they are going to be dynamic to watch. I like it, and a, a cool play design as well. Thanks, so. though. It was a great breakdown. We got more to come on early birds. The dogs getting ready for their first SEC matchup. Oh, and uh, speaking of the dogs, once he pressured him and I saw what was going on, I got a chance to like jump and basketball flashbacks. Oh, we flash back as well with Lorenzo Carter and take a look at a huge play as we're going deep. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best, nothing. And sponsored by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. Truest, when you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. And the Home Depot, how doers get more done. More Early Birds coming back at you. Early 
early birds. Listen up. It's not Saturday without some college football talk. Brought to you by Zaxby's. Indescribably good chicken fingers and wings. Here's Justin Felder. Welcome back into Early Birds, and we welcome in Michael Jenkins. And Jank, dream come true. I'm going to give you the chance, if you take it, to criticize the Ooh, SEC. Been waiting on this. And DJ, nowhere in sight. He's in the <laughs> other studio. You ready for that? I'm ready. All Let's right. go. We're going to save that for the end, though. And we'll start off talking about DJ's dogs. Georgia taking on South Carolina, opening up conference play this afternoon at home. And the difficulty level, Jank, really ratchets up for yeah. Georgia, uh, their first SEC opponent. And the fans I know, they're not nervous, right? But maybe they're not seeing the dominance they're used to seeing. Yeah, maybe not quite as dominant so far, but they still are 27 and a half right. point favorites in the SEC right now. And, you know, South Carolina fans are saying, hey, we beat these guys mm -hmm. in 2019 at Sanford Stadium. So anything can happen. Yeah, rarely mm -hmm. easy against the Gamecocks. One mm -hmm. area, though, that Georgia might want to focus on, the ground game. They over averaged over 200 yards per game last year. So far this season, way lower the first few weeks. It's hard to run the ball early in a game. I don't care what level of football you're at. I don't care how much disparity you have in talent over the other team. I don't see teams just go out there and rip off seven, eight yard pops to run. So what you have to do is wear people down, make them tackle your backs, and then you gash them in the third, fourth quarter when you make them quit. We really haven't gotten to that point. So maybe the wild card in this one, though, is Spencer Rattler. For yep. South Carolina, he's a really good quarterback. He can mm -hmm. throw it all over the field. Is he a guy that could give Georgia problems? He can give them fits, but people also have to remember that they played North Carolina earlier this year, and they had nine sacks mm. on Spencer Rattler. So now you come against this Georgia defense who's going to be ready to do the same. So it's going to be a, a tough day for Spencer Rattler. Yeah, Georgia's pass rush will be looking to tee off uh, against uh, Rattler and the Gamecocks. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, they've got an SEC opponent as well this week, 7.30 tonight. They're they're going to travel to Oxford, take on 17th ranked Ole Miss. And Georgia Tech, they've had some really good moments uh, so far this year. But what's it going to take to hang in this one late and maybe pull an upset? Well, they got a really good quarterback now that can mm -hmm. throw the ball. And Haynes King transferred from the SEC, Texas right. A&M. Um, who's going to look to kind of rectify what <laughs> happened last year and not being able to score a single point against Ole Miss? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Last year was 42 nothing. Ole Miss won. And Brent Key doesn't sound like he spends a whole lot of time sitting around and thinking about that one. I can't remember Sunday. You should remember last year. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Look, I mean, I know what I've seen on tape for two games. You know, they're explosive. They got a good quarterback. Manages the offense, put the ball where it's supposed to go. They have one of the best running backs in the country. We got to be balanced in what we do on defense to make sure that we were able to, yeah, you know, you know cover and, and, and defend the explosives. So that game is tonight. And we, we talked about a couple of SEC schools there. Here's the big question. Is the SEC down this Oof. year? Right where we got Alabama lost, yep. LSU lost, yep. Texas A&M. I'd rather not talk about Florida. It's it's, it's too painful. Uh, so, Jake, is the SEC have the have the mighty fallen this year? Well, they don't have eight, nine teams ranked okay. in the top twenty-five. It's only five. You still got Georgia. Bama still has a chance. But there's, I don't think there's going to be that talk of oh, we're going to get two teams in the Final Four this okay. year. So look for these other schools a little bit more parity in college football, and you know we'll see what happens. Uh, I think that's as nice as we're going to get from a Big Ten guy about the SEC right there. Jake, I appreciate your time. Shock, what do you think? I, I almost heard, was that a compliment about the SEC? I don't know. It was, it was a little mix. It was really close, Jake. And I, okay. I think you really at heart. You're an SEC guy. I know. It, <laughs> but it's all good. All right, every week on Going Deep, a Falcons player gives you inside story behind one of the biggest plays in their career. Speaking of the SEC, former dog Lorenzo Carter made a splash in his first season with the Falcons, including what he calls his favorite play. Zoe explains in this week's Going Deep. Ooh, favorite play of my career has to be my touchdown. Pick six. That can win you games, literally win you games. Walker on first oh. down, it's picked off. What a play. Lorenzo Carter takes it in for a Falcons touchdown. The defense, we just felt like we needed to make a play. Um, it was, momentum was going back and forth and then it was like, all right, y'all, let's go ahead and lock down. Let's make sure that we go out there, get a three and out and get offensive ball back and well, we had a blitz and we knew they liked the screen so once we saw them dropping back the screen it's like all right y'all let's once you see it let's be smart about it let's not everybody run at the quarterback and mike made a play um, he had to pressure the quarterback and make sure he threw the ball so once he pressured him and i saw what was going on i got a chance to like jump and basketball 
flashbacks, go get the rebound. So when it got the ball in, once I realized I had the ball, it was like, oh, I'm by myself, let's go, let's run. So, I mean, I still got a little bit of speed. So found my way to the end zone and the rest was history, we got the win. Well, ahead on Early Birds, it is the four wheels that nobody wants to see on a football field. Falcons team doctor will explain the situations that call for a cart. That is straight ahead. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, it's not something you ever want to see on an NFL field. Did make a cameo in week one with Aaron Rodgers, of course. The cart that takes injured players off the field and back to the locker room. Not every injury situation, though, calls for the cart, and that's the focus of this week's Emory Road to Recovery. A lot of times with the cart, we'll utilize the cart if a player is not safe, of course, to um, take themselves off the field on their own power. Um, if we feel like that we know it's a little bit more of a severe injury that they need to go back straight back to the locker room, probably it's just easier and quicker for them to kind of safely get transported back to the locker room. We use the cart in that uh, state. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times it just may be that the player is a little woozy or they're not steady on their feet, something where we don't feel comfortable or safe carrying the player off the field ourselves and that's not the right thing to do we'll use the cart in that case as well never something you ever want to see here's something we love to see though the falcons continuing their focus on flag football all about this sport we'll explain coming up next it's almost game time falcons fans when the falcons sack the opposing qb at home you'll score a bogo free big zack snack meal the day after the game valid online only at atlanta area stores has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, DJ, this was really cool to see in Flowery Branch last weekend. The Falcons hosted a free flag football clinic mm. and a coaching seminar, which I thought was a nice little touch there. Yeah. Players, they learn from Falcons. Great, so you can see them. They're in the indoor facility right yeah. now. That's, that's pretty cool. They're playing where the Falcons practice sometimes. And the coaches got a lesson as well. And DJ, it looked like a great time. Yeah, you're just talking about the experience you have to say, all right, this is the same feel that a professional football team practices on every single week. And a lot of these girls are really athletic. You see my man Keenan Forney right there, longtime uh -huh. Falcons, the offensive lineman. But you see the quickness right there. I mean, this is a such a growing sport. I hear so many people who play flag football, and the, the girls do such a great job of just, you know, buying into it. And you see, I mean, getting loose right there. Yeah, absolutely. We feature it from time to time Friday nights on High Five Sports. It's a, a great sport and a great job that the Falcons do highlighting it. That event also put on with help from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Be sure to join us for the Dirty Bird Report. Tomorrow night we'll have highlights, interviews, and so much more from the Falcons game against those Green Bay Packers. It's tomorrow night. Shock Michael Jenkins and our own Kelly Price. Make sure to join us in shock. One other thing fans will be noticing uh, this weekend, Ooh. the red helmet. Give me, yeah. give me your, uh, your fashion breakdown. You like this? I like it. Uh, uh, as opposed to what a lot of people, other people, they think it's not cool. You don't have good, you know, maybe don't do, get a lot of wins in it. But I like it. I mean, the detail, the gold in it, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I would ask you to put it on, but I know you don't want to mess up the do. No, I don't, right. don't want to do yeah. that. Um, yeah. But you're welcome to, Shaq. Right, cool, I'll put it on. There no we problem. go. We're going to wear it the rest of the show? Here we go. All right, well, while we've got the helmet on, give us one more matchup to watch between the you Falcons you, you, and you, Packers. You can't take me seriously. Well, I now. can't tackle you right now. You're going to be fine. But uh, real quick, one more matchup to watch. I think you got to protect Desmond Ritter. I think yeah. it always comes down to that. I say that every week, but you have to protect him. you got a couple other dogs, Devontae Wyatt, yep. Way Walker, yep. and then Devondre Campbell coming back, right. another guy who played for the Falcons for a long time. So their defense... They got after Justin Fields last week. That's not allowed this week versus our Desmond Bear. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of dogs, a lot of uh, Georgia guys on the Packers. Always a good recipe for, for sure. success. All right. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thank you for joining us on Early Birds for DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. Have a good morning. Love it. Great rest of your weekend. <laughs>